Sir Doug Nichols was a trailblazer. Back in the 1930s and 40s, he carved a path for Indigenous Australians in a time when opportunities were scarce. Welcome to Lace Out. Today we're diving into the history and celebrating a true legend of Australian rules football and the Indigenous community, Sir Doug Nichols. Originally from Victoria, Sir Doug displayed exceptional talent. Despite his short stature, standing only five foot two, he was a force to be reckoned with. He started his professional career not with Fitzroy, but with the Northcote Football Club in the Victorian Football Association, or VFA. There, he quickly established himself as a star player. As the sole Aborigine in the VFA, he was known affectionately as the Flying Abo, but called worse by his opponents and barrackers. He competed for five seasons, being named Best and Ferris twice, appearing in three association grand finals and winning in 1929, leading Northcote to a premiership. In 1932, Sir Doug made the jump to the big leagues, joining the Fitzroy Football Club, who agreed to employ him as a groundsman in the prestigious VFL. Here, he truly made his mark. Over six seasons with Fitzroy, he racked up an impressive 54 games. While he never reached the ultimate glory of a VFL premiership, he did play alongside some of the sport's greats, like Hayden Bunton and Wilfred Chicken Smallhorn, as well as being the first Indigenous player to represent the state of Victoria in 1935. Now, despite facing prejudice on the field, Sir Doug's talent and athleticism shone through. He was known for his incredible speed and agility, particularly as a wingman, a position requiring both defensive and attacking prowess. But Sir Doug's impact went far beyond the football field. He became a powerful voice for his community. After his playing career, he dedicated himself to advocating for the rights of the Aboriginal Australians. He was the first non-white person to serve as a governor of an Australian state and is the only Aboriginal person to have held vice-regal office. He was a bridge between the Indigenous and the non-Indigenous cultures. He became the first Aboriginal person to be knighted by the Queen, a true symbol of achievement. He was even crowned Melbourne's 1973 King of Moomba. Sir Doug Nichols died on the 4th of June 1988 at Marupna, and he was preceded by his wife and survived by his five children. He was given a state funeral and buried in a tribal ground at the Kamarajara Cemetery. Today, Sir Doug Nichols is celebrated as a national hero, and in 2016, the Australian Football League named its annual Indigenous Round after him as a testament to his legacy. It's a chance to recognise the incredible talent and resilience of Indigenous Australians in the game. Players wear specially Indigenous designed guernseys, often designed by the players themselves, and there are cultural performances before every game. Sir Doug Nichols' story is one of courage, determination and passion for both football and his community. He opened doors for future generations and continues to inspire us to be better, not just as Australians, but more importantly, better people.